Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to teach you how you guys can leverage AWS Glue Interactive Session uh, which is Glue 4 Interactive Sessions with the DBT projects. So we'll use the uh, plugin uh, DBT Glue Adapter with Glue Interactive Session to join two hoodie tables and build a simple view. The goal of the video is to basically show you the complete steps on how you guys can get started. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So the first step is we need an IAM role which will allow us to create the Glue Interactive Session, which will allow, allow us to you know uh, access the Glue database, S3, etc. And for that, I have a very simple uh, serverless.yml file and all it does, it will spin up all the uh, resources for you, which is basically an IAM role with the required policy. So come to the project repository, come inside the folder infra and there is a file called env edit your account uh, uh, account ID and the region where you are performing this exercise and then it's a piece of cake right so come inside the folder in front okay and then what you need to do is you need to say SLS deploy and this will deploy the stack on AWS I have already deployed the stack so uh, I should be getting uh, you know success as you can see now if you go to your IAM if you go to roles and here you can see uh, the ARN Please copy this ARN on Notepad because we will need this ARN in the DBT project. So now that you have deployed, uh, you know, the stack and you have the IAM role, which will take care of all the permissions. And now the next step is we need to create a virtual environment and install the DBT uh, dependencies. So let's do that very easy. So we'll use the command Python minus when DBT environment. So I'll create a virtual environment called DBT ENV. And after that, we will activate the virtual environment. And then as you can see over here, I see the virtual environment has now been activated. I would need two plugins, dbt core and dbt glue. So we'll install them using uh, pip3 install the name of the plugin, okay? So once the dbt core is installed, I will go ahead and install the dbt glue. So let's wait for a second or two to complete. Almost there. And it's done. Now let's install a dbt glue plugin. And uh, it's done. So we have both the plugin installed, right? So now let's clear the terminal. Now what we need to do is let me clear the terminal. Now we need to initialize an empty dbt project. So we'll be using the command dbt in it. This will uh, prompt you to enter uh, a project name. And the project name we'll be going to be using is dbt underscore glue underscore demo. So let's enter. I'm just going to click yes. So now it's going to ask which database would you like to use? So we're going to use the number one. Oops, number one, that is uh, glue. And then it will basically initialize the project for you in the current working directory. Now you have the project directory initialized, right? You will see all these folders, models, seed, macro, test, snapshot, etc. Let's get rid of everything, right? So what we will do is we'll cd inside the folder that is uh, dbt glue demo. And then we're going to get rid of all these files. We don't need it for this, okay? All right, so everything is gone, right? So all I have is simply uh, the dbt project.yml and that's it, okay? So now we're gonna create a folder called models inside this. So directory models. And then inside models, we're gonna be basically creating a file called source.yml. So like this example, source.yml, right? And inside source.yml, we're gonna copy this particular code. And I'll explain you what this does. So come here, copy, paste. So what this says is for my DVD project to teach you, I have two tables in my glue catalog, orders and customers. These are two hoodie tables inside the default database. If I quickly wanna show you, if I go to over here, again, database default, I have these two, again, hoodie tables over here, right? So that's, so basically I am simply defining the source that, hey, for my project, I, I wanna use these two tables, right? Because I wanna join and show you, right? So that's, what are def defined in source. After that, we're gonna create a folder inside model called examples. So we create a directory called examples. And inside example, we're gonna create this particular SQL file. Uh, the name of the file is stage underscore customer underscore order. Again, it's a simple SQL where we're gonna join these two tables, right? These two hoodie tables. So now let's copy this code that is given to you. 
the earth and let's drop down okay so again as you can see uh, we are selecting bunch of columns from the customer table right as you can see and then we are selecting bunch of columns from the order table and then again simple uh, denormalized you know jo uh, we're joining these two tables on customer id right as simple as that so now we uh, we are almost done with the uh, directory now we just need one more file called profiles.yml in that directory so in this we're going to create a file called profiles.yml and then we're going to copy this particular code over here and then we have to, I'll explain you what it does so profiles okay so over here we will put the dbt project name so remember we gave the dbt project name as uh, dbt underscore glue underscore demo we are configuring a profile called dev the type is going to be glue right this is the arn which will you know uh, make sure that we can create interactive sessions etc uh, you know you can easily configure the worker type g1 g2 g4 g8 you can easily increase more number of workers uh, i'm using the the, the default uh, schema now this one is very very important i'll tell you why glue session reuse to true if you do not set this to true what's going to happen is you know every time you run your dbt debug dbt run it's going to make new 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 interactive sessions in your glue and which will cost you more money but what you want to do is once the session is created you just want to reuse that you don't want to create fresh again and again the interactive sessions right so that's why make sure that this is set to true okay because if you don't set it to true either you do dbt debug or you do dbt run it's going to make new sessions and and again that's going to add up cost pretty fast after that data lake format as hoodie location where would you want to dump your dbt uh, you know results and this is the configuration for our hoodie as you can see and that's it right so i'll review the project directory so we made a project directory called dbt underscore glue underscore demo inside models we have a folder called example and inside example we have our you know uh, simple SQL that joins two table okay then we have source.yml where we defined you know uh, the sources right that we want to use uh, that, that, that we want to use to join right so I define these tables in the source.yml I define my profiles.yml where I defined everything right now let's verify everything in action so what I'm gonna do is let me quickly pull up notes so now we're gonna do dbd debug okay so now let me all right so as you can see we are inside the dbt project right so now uh, i'm gonna copy the path so i'm gonna say copy copy reference and this is where you know this is where inside this directory you know dbt will find my profiles.yml right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna issue a dbt debug and i'm gonna uh, issue this command so i should see success right that's that's the goal that i'm expecting so let's fire this so now it's gonna verify everything is okay as you can see and also what you will see if you go to glue and if you head over to the interactive session and if you simply refresh as you can see now it's in the provisioning state again if you do not set that flag again this is very important and, and i think it's not really mentioned well on on the documentation this one if you do not set this flag to true it's going to make multiple interactive session every time you do dbt run dbt debug it's going to create new session and all these sessions will be active which will cost you money right so make sure that flag is set to true so once the provisioning is done we should see uh, success over here so let's wait for a couple of seconds as you can see uh, you know all checks passed and as you can see my profile is now in the ready state just refreshing and here you can see the data like format as hoodie and the, the the spark configuration right hopefully made sense now what we can do we can issue dbt run and again if you do not configure that flag that i told you right uh, it will create all these new new interactive sessions so now since the session is active it's gonna reuse this particular session right so now let this run uh, once this is complete we should see this table uh, inside uh, the default database and you know we can then query with athena if needed right so let's wait for a couple of more seconds and then i'll resume the video from here now as you can see that's successful my dbt project was successful and if i go back to my h3 i see a dbt folder default stage underscore customer underscore order and that's my parquet file 
Now my business users or analysts can simply come here and they can happily come to Athena, click on preview table, they can query the table, they can build dashboards in QuickSight, etc. right? So hopefully that made sense. Now I just want to review the complete steps, right? So what we did. So first of all, step number one, you create an IAM role. After creating the IAM role, which has all the necessary permissions, then step number two, you create a virtual environment. After creating a virtual environment, create your source.yml, create a model uh, folder inside the model folder, uh, create your silver or gold, whatever, uh, you know, SQL query that you have for joining these two tables. Once that is done, define a, fi a file called profiles.yml. Inside profiles.yml, put the ARN, uh, ARN that we generated. Uh, define your uh, glue workers or, or the worker type and uh, make sure to select the data lake format as hoodie. Make sure to provide the configuration. And most important thing that I said, that particular flag, right? Glue session reuse, set that to true. Once that is done, you can do dbt debug. Once that is done, then you can do dbt run. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Now I know there were a bunch of steps that you need to follow and hence I'll make sure that these steps are in the GitHub readme page. Now, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to ask your question in the comment window below and I'll be very, very happy to assist you. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming and I'll see you in the next video.